This demo with the tea bag is one that someone pointed out to me. I'm not remembering who it was. And I believe then I found it, uh, looked it up on YouTube and saw some things done there. I then began practicing it myself to see whether it really was legit. <clears throat> you just use the tissue paper from the tea bag and by lighting it, you get it to move in an upward fashion and all you're working with is the, the combustion reaction where you're producing a lot of hot air and so it's the same dynamics that they use in hot air balloons and you see the jet going on there the flame going on there they heat the air that causes the balloon to inflate and then they get a situation where the balloon and the gondola all the basket and everything underneath there its mass is lighter than what the air around it and so it rises up the same thing's true with the tea bag, and you see that the tea bag burns almost all the way to the end, so it's getting lighter and lighter because there's less mass of the tea bag, but then there's now an, enough hot air right there, and that column of hot air has been forming as the tea bag burns, so now it just flows right up that column of hot air. And at the same time it's flowing up there, it's combusting the last of the tissue paper, and it becomes very lacy, light material. And as you can see, it still holds together a little bit, but it's just about all just a carbonized type residue left from the burn reaction. Safety-wise, um, it's always challenging when you're lighting something and then it's going to move around. And uh, one of the problems that I've seen in demonstrations where you're doing a burning reaction and where flame is involved is not thinking about your environment. If I light this tea bag a fire and it flies left to right compared to what I thought it was going to do going this way, what is it going to catch a fire over here? If you don't have anything around you that's flammable, you're going to be in a safe situation. And many of the accidents that I've evaluated and seen and read about where teachers got into problems is they had too big a source of fuel too close to where they were doing the live demonstration with the flame. And uh, you just have to keep those things away. And um, so the main thing is having space there. Of course, you want to have your students a distance back away. As you can see, I could catch that right there in a piece of paper and it didn't burn the paper, the, what was left of it. But still, again, you want to have those necessary cautions of distance and proximity of any other flammable materials being focused on and aware of when you light the tissue paper. As far as the tea bag and what you use there in the tissue paper, the, what you see used there is just your standard Lipton tea bag black tea, um, nothing fancy with that. Uh, I think any tea bag is going to work and be able to be used there. The key is that it has to be standing on its own. If it falls over as you light it, which I've got many attempts in seeing that happen, then it just burns it up. It doesn't rise up there. So you have to make sure it's stable. And one of the things I've done uh, is to cut the tea bag with scissors so I make sure I really got a flat surface to set down on there and sometimes you can cut the top that way you've got a nice even level to light so it burns down there. That may not be so critical but I've done that just to enhance the potential that it's going to work. Um, this is a demo that you need to be prepared to fail at. It won't work every time because it's just very sensitive and um, but when you get it right as you see in the video it really is impressive and, and <clears throat> so some of the factors you have to be aware of is what's the airflow around where you're at. <clears throat> if you've got some mischievous students in the front row and they start blowing and exhaling, they can, it, can, it can be affected. It's very sensitive, the airflow. And so where we did the video was critical to having that success. I've tried it in other areas and not got the demonstration to work as well. And so if you're in a big lecture room or you have a larger room and a lot of airflow, it may not work as well, or it may not perform. So uh, it, it's a fun one to try and let's see what's happened kind of starting point and uh, observe and whether it does well, work well, it's, it's impressive. And of course you got the video so you can show them that this is really how it goes that way.
a, another condition that's going to factor, I've mentioned about airflow and things like that. Another factor can be how humid it is. If it's a really rainy day, the humidity is up. Tissue paper is very sensitive to that. And so the other thing you could do is prepare the tissue paper, put it in a desiccator, and have it in there dry till right before you light it. And then be aware that if it's a humid day, you want to get it out, do it, because the longer it sits out there, it's going to pick up that. And that, you see how sensitive it is to the balance of being lighter than air and floating, a little bit of moisture added to that tissue paper is going to change that potential and it, it may not float and uh, just literally burn right to the ground and nothing happened. It burns, but it's not able to float up because there's too much onboard humidity. To show you how to do it, this is just a standard tea bag here and they're generally made with a staple that holds the string at the top. You probably could do it uh, very quickly. I just pull it apart like this, but you probably take scissors and just cut right across the top there. But I usually try to just pull it apart to keep as much tissue paper available. And that's one of the things you could do is experiment with how little of tissue paper can you use to actually get it to work. I've tried different amounts and at one time thought you didn't need all of it but have moved back to the position to try to keep as much tissue paper as possible. Essentially, it's folded over and the bag's the bottom part there. So what you do is just get it open. Tea is totally usable, so you can collect that and have a nice cup of tea if you want later on. And then it's a matter of then getting to set up and you see how tore and ripped the bottom of that is there, that's not going to set well. So that's where you'd cut that off and maybe set that there. Then you want to have it as open as possible because the heat of the hot air inside is going to help to raise it up. That becomes the kind of the balloon effect inside of there. And let's see maybe if I can get it to sit there. That end sits there. And uh, so you're going to light at the top, being very gentle. You can knock it over with the flame. Uh, in some of the videos I've seen and some of the times I've done it, I've used the match just because there's not much airflow with the match at the top there. You use a little lighter and it's shooting a jet out. That little jet phew, lights it and topples over your tower and it burns there on the table. So just some techniques to work with. But it's, it's a fun demo that uh, maybe could be a class project where several students working on it. I don't know, you want to do them all at once and have everybody light and tissue paper in the lab, but if you had them individually working on it in groups and observing it, there's a, a lot of testing to see what's the primary way to make that work. And, and then think about the dynamics of the, why is it floating up, the hotter gas and causing it to rise and things like that.